Okay, Dr. Scott Lynn here to help explain some of the differences between our 3D single motion plate and our dual motion plate. So you can see I have two swings down here in the in my stack. I got Kyle Berkshire here hitting on the single motion plate. So this is one plate that he's standing on. Both feet are on the same plate. And here I have Matthew Wolf at the most recent Players Championship. And you can see now we have two different plates uh, that he is standing on here. Um, and on the surface, you can see these look very similar. So you can see that I can get all the same information from my dual plate that I get from my single plate. Uh, so we can mathematically combine the information that we're getting off each individual plate and give you all the same information that we get from our single plate. So we're still gonna get the pressures between the feet and the ground. We're going to get our stance width. We're going to get the amount of pressure on each foot. We're going to get our center of pressure in each foot and that line that joins them together. And then we're going to get our total center of pressure. And we can follow these throughout the swing, just as we did with our previous uh, 3D motion plate. So you can see all that same information is available to you. Then we also have the total combined horizontal force. So this is the force acting towards or away from the target. We call it the front back. Uh, we got our total combined torque plate. Uh, and our torque plate is going to be calculated as it always has for our single plate system about the middle of the plate. So the axis of rotation for this torque is gonna be about the center of the plate. And then we have our force, vertical axis force, the total combined vertical force uh, that the golfer puts into the ground. And you can see that in our dual plate, we have exactly the same numbers. So you can use the dual plate just like a single plate um, if you wish. <clears throat> now, where the dual plate uh, has its value is you can see up here to the right of the name of the force, we can now split this force into, and if we take this along here, to where Matt kind of produces his maximal horizontal force, kind of right in transition there. So you can see he's producing a total force positive of 12% of his body weight, which is a force, a reaction force. So on average, he's pushing down kind of and away from the target and the ground is pushing him up and towards the target. And that horizontal component of that is 12% of his body weight. So there's a 12% net force shoving him towards uh, the target. And so if we knew that from our single plate system, we could then, or from the dual plate system, we can now dig into how much comes from each foot. So now you can see of that 12% that he produces, he's producing 7% from his right foot and he's actually producing 5% from his left foot. So he's got 7% of his, of his right foot here kind of pushing down and away from the target. And he's got about 5% of his right foot kind of pulling in this direction there. And so the 5% plus the 7% is going to give us that total of 12%. Um, and so this is a really interesting way to break down how each foot is working to produce these forces. And, and one thing we find pretty interesting is as we go into this negative braking force here that Matt is producing. So now there's a net force pushing him away or reaction force pushing him away from the target of 17% of his body weight. But if we break this down into individual forces, he's actually producing positive 16% uh, of his body weight. So he's, he's, off his right foot, he's actually pushing 16 this way. And then off his left foot, he's got a massive 33% braking force. So he's producing a lot of braking force and he's creating this little TP effect with his forces, uh, which we find in a lot of long drivers. So this is some information that we previously would not have had access to if we didn't have this dual plate system. We can also see the same thing in vertical forces. So if you come up here to where Matt produces his maximum vertical force, which is right here, we can now break that down into how much force is coming from his right foot. So of his 253% vertical force, he's getting 119% of that from his right foot. And he's getting 134% of that from his left foot. And so if we add the 134 and the 119, we get to our 
uh, total peak force off both feet of 253%. So now we can really dial in which foot is doing the work in terms of creating these horizontal forces side to side towards and away from the target and these vertical forces uh, straight down producing kind of the jumping type force. Uh, so those ones are really simple or relatively simple because they're just an anat or a uh, algebraic sum of the two forces. So if I know how much my right foot and my left foot are producing and I add them together, I will get my total force. The torques get a little bit more complicated. Um, and you can see here how torque plate does not have the ability to break this down into the right or the left foot because it's just the total amount of torque acting about the middle of the plate and it's the exact same number that we've been giving to our users for a very long time on our single plate system. And so we wanted to have that same number in the software so that we compare uh, swings you have had previously or have looked at previously um, on the single plate system to swings that are taken on the dual plate system. So this is just the total amount of torque or the total amount that Matt is trying to spin that plate underneath his feet um, and about the middle of the plate or about the center of these two plates right here. Uh, but the extra information that you get now with the dual plate is what we call torque person. And the total torque person, so you can see when we switch to torque person, now it splits into a right foot and a left foot torque. Um, and the total torque person is the total amount of torque, but now not calculated about the center of the plate, but calculated about the center of pressure. So you can see here where that center of pressure is, that is now with torque person, um, the axis of rotation um, for, for this torque uh, calculation. And so we know at this particular point in Matt's swing where he's creating a maximum amount of torque, he's actually dragging his trail foot away from the target slightly and pushing his lead foot towards the target slightly and creating these toe heel shear forces, which previously on our single plate system would kind of cancel each other out. Uh, but now we can see that he's creating these and this is uh, being calculated about this center of pressure now, which is slightly more towards his, if you can see from the, the pressure diagram, slightly more towards his left foot. So now we're creating that torque calculation about this point, which is the center of pressure. And so it's a slightly different calculation. You can see that the torque person and torque plate look very similar. Um, their magnitudes are just slightly off, so you can see they're, they're a very similar shape. Um, their magnitudes are just slightly different, um, but the differences come from where that, that torque is being calculated about or where the axis of rotation is. Uh, but the most more in interesting part of uh, the torque person is now we can divide it down into the individual torques on each foot. So you can see right here is where Matt is actually spinning his foot into the ground and he's creating a rotational torque where he's trying to kind of externally rotate his foot into the ground. And that would be what we call the free moment on the force plate. So that force, if I put my foot on top of the force plate and just tried to rotate it, uh, that's what we're getting here. So the amount of force that he's creating that free moment with or that rotational force um, through his right foot. And you can see that rotational force is positive when he's externally rotating his right foot into the ground. And that generally happens kind of, it happens in Matt actually pretty early. Most people you'll see it a little bit later, um, but that's the force we're examining there when we go to torque person right foot. So that free moment on the plate here. And then if we go torque person left foot, you can see that actually now a positive force is going to be kind of an internal rotation. So even though he's up on his toe, he's creating a little bit of an internal rotation torque here. And then it's back when he gets his foot on the ground there that he starts creating right there that negative torque, which is going to be the external rotation torque. And so understanding what's positive and negative in terms of torques, uh, you need to understand your right hand rule. And so the vertical axis of the force plate downwards is positive. And so if I point my thumb downwards and spin my fingers, that causes external rotation of the right foot to be positive, but internal rotation of the left foot to be positive. 
So we will go through that information a little bit more in our education when we get to it for the dual plates, but that is more information that we didn't have previously about the free moments or how the golfer is screwing their foot into the ground to try to create some rotation in that fashion. And so another thing you can look at now with the dual plates is the toe heel force. So as you can see, the toe heel force in a lot of people was relatively flat and quiet throughout the time when the golfer is creating a lot of forces kind of getting ready to hit the ball. Um, and that's because the feet are pushing in opposite directions and kind of canceling each other out. So with the single plate, we didn't really look at toe heel forces a whole lot, uh, but with the dual plates now we can see that Matt is producing obvious oppositely directed forces here. And if I look at my torque plate there, so you see right where torque plate peaks is pretty close to where the positive force coming off the right foot. So that's Matt producing that shearing force backwards with his right foot and the negative force coming from the left foot. And that would be the force pushing forwards in this direction. So you see how they go in opposite directions to create that torque there. So now we can see he's producing actually quite a bit of shearing force off his trail foot here, which is an interesting pattern um, when he creates his peak torque. Um, and that's somewhat different from what you'll see in, in uh, most golfers. Uh, but then you can see here as he comes down there, he has this big imbalance between barely any shear force off his right. So this one has kind of gone away and now he's producing tons of shear force on his left, which is creating that net force shoving his hip backwards and kind of clearing out of the way. Um, so this is a pretty interesting pattern for these horizontal toe heel forces that Matt is producing. Um, a lot of other golfers um, just have kind of one peak and one peak negative and the peak of these two positives and negatives lines up with the peak torque as that's one of the, the key methods by which uh, golfers produce rotation. So lots more information now that can be provided from the dual plate system. Um, a lot of more research needs to go into understanding these. Uh, but as in the meantime, as we start to understand this dual plate information, you can still use this plate just as we did with the old single plate system um, and the single plate information still being extremely valuable uh, to help golfers hit the ball better. So that's the differences, lots of new information, lots of cool new stuff to learn from the dual plate system. Uh, but in the meantime, it can still be used just like the single plate system.